Now that we've set up our TrueCrypt volume, we're going to show how we need to set it up to use it with Simple Security Script. So I'm going to go back to TrueCrypt. I'm going to uh, find our volume and mount it. So here is uh, tutorial.lesson that we created. I'm going to Alt Tab, drag and drop that into the select file box. And then I'm going to click Mount, put in our password. That mounts our volume. I'm going to double click that mounted volume. That will bring it up into our Windows Explorer. Now that we have it open in Windows Explorer, we need to throw a few files on there that we're going to be using. Some of the files we're going to be using are, are portable files. I'm just going to create a folder to put them in. And in here I would like to put Firefox. So we're going to run Firefox from this drive. It gives us a nice little option to be able to save all our bookmarks and settings and passwords in Firefox and put them local and not have to worry about other people uh, finding our portable stuff and, and getting into our accounts and whatnot if we're you know make any mistakes with leaving stuff behind as we tend to do on a normal desktop computer or something like that. Okay, Firefox Portable. I'm just going to drag and drop that. Okay, that puts it on there. Um, now that we have that on there, we're going to need another folder. I'm going to call it SSS, and that's going to contain a, uh, a monitor file that is part of the simple security script. So in the main here, we have SSS mount watch exe. All right, this is a specially uh, designed file to be able to exit the TrueCrypt volume and stuff like that. It just works with the simple security script to give you a way to manage things a little bit easier. Uh, puts an icon in your system's tray, and when you exit it, it dismounts the TrueCrypt volume, all that stuff. Now, sometimes we might be running multiples of these, so I'm going to hit F2 and rename this to SSS test.exe. If we're running simple security script to do several different TrueCrypt volumes at the same time. It would be a good idea to give each one inside your TrueCrypt volume a unique name to make sure there isn't any collisions or anything like that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is run this file. So once we run the file, you can see right away it creates an INI file, which is uh, what it should be doing. So now down in the systems tray, we'll see that we have an icon for SSS Launcher. So the next thing we need to do is right click on it and choose settings. So in the settings we want to tell it what it is we're going to be running. And so the first thing we want to do browse to our currently mounted drive and we're going to find our SSS folder here. Let me bring that down so you can see it. SSS folder and we're going to choose SSS test exe. So the file that we just created. We want that to be the main application that the launcher runs when we mount our TrueCrypt volume. And the next thing we're going to run is Firefox. So we're going to go to our portables, Firefox, Firefox Portable EXE. So when the application runs, it will run both of these. And it will use Launch Main as the application it watches to exit. Once Launch Main application, in this case SSS Test EXE, exits, the script will attempt to dismount the TrueCrypt volume. Okay, also at the beginning of these, where the drive letter is, we can substitute it with percent %d, which is uh, noted right here. Percent %d is a placeholder for the current drive letter. So because we can mount this to many different TrueCrypt volume drive letters, which could change from time to time, we need to change this to percent %d so that it won't matter which volume drive that it's currently mounted to, it will still work. So it's percent %d, just to do that. Um, the process name should match the launch main name, and that comes into effect when you're using a uh, force process close, which we need in this case. The tray name is the name that's going to show up when you hold your mouse over the tray icon, so we could rename that if we wanted. Simple security script. The idle timeout is when you walk away from the computer, how long does it take before the script uh, times out due to inactivity on your computer? And once it times out, it will attempt to dismount the TrueCrypt volume and all that stuff. So if we, we could put that to whatever value we want it. So it only kicks in once you stop using the computer. And so five minutes should be fine. The other thing we're going to do for now is we're going to launch Explorer on startup. 
So as for the rest of these settings, we'll create another video somewhere along the line that shows us what all these settings are. But they also do all have um, tooltips, which is very, very helpful when you're in here. So now that we've done that, we're going to click on OK, and that will save our settings for us. We'll come down to our SSS launcher, and the next thing we need to do is exit it. So now that we've exited that, there's one other option that I'm going to show you that we could do. We could put a custom icon in there as well. So the the custom icon we're going to use, I'm going to drag and drop it over in there. So once you to use a custom icon, it would have to have the same name as whatever the the mount watch, in this case the SSS test exe is. So we're going to rename this to SSS test.ico and if you ever rename the exe file you have to rename all the other files as well that you're using for this so the ini and the icon they all have to match so just a heads up on that okay now that we've done that we're going to run sss test exe one more time it pops up explorer and shows us because uh, we set the explorer option all right, so now that we've done that, the next thing uh, we want to see is in our systems tray. We'll see that the icon has changed and the tooltip has changed when we hover over the simple security script at this point. So now we can exit that. We'll go into our TrueCrypt and we will dismount the volume because we're now got it set up to the, to the degree that we need it. The next thing we need to do is take that tutorial.lesson file, our TrueCrypt volume, and we need to copy it onto our portable drive that we're going to use our USB stick in this case. So in our USB stick, which is drive F on this system, and I'm going to create a folder called vol and open that folder. Now I'm going to take our tutorial.lesson and I'm going to drag and drop it onto there. So that'll take a minute to copy, so we'll come right back when this is done. Okay, it's just finishing up here. And here we go, we have our file now on our USB stick. Also, I took the liberty of copying a few things uh, previously over to the USB stick here. In the portables, I copied in TrueCrypt and KeyPass2. TrueCrypt is going to be needed on the portable to uh, mount our TrueCrypt volume if we're uh, using this on different systems and the systems don't have TrueCrypt installed, then we can use the portable version and that's what we're going to set up to do. KeyPass 2 is also portable and an open source program, fantastic program. And KeyPass 2 allows us to have encrypted files that hold all our accounts and passwords in them. And then we use one master password to contain that. And we can create as many KeyPass files as we need. And later on we're going to show you how to use that so that if you decide you want to store your password for your TrueCrypt volumes inside of a KeyPass file, we will um, have it set up so it's all automated so that we just put in one password and the TrueCrypt volume is still mounted. So we'll go over that in a later time. All right. Now, also the files that we needed on the Kingston drive here, drive F, our USB stick, are SSS settings and SSS TC. The SSS TC is for Simple Security Script TrueCrypt. And so this is the file that we use to uh, launch and mount our TrueCrypt volume. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is run the settings. The settings are going to set it up so that we can point to where everything is. So the first thing we want to do is uh, find a TrueCrypt location. So the TrueCrypt location in this case is going to be on our portables, TrueCrypt, TrueCrypt EXE. And our TrueCrypt volume, it needs to know where the TrueCrypt volume is. The TrueCrypt volume is going to be on our Kingston inside our VOL folder tutorial.lesson. So these are the two things we need to that. We're going to leave it to uh, auto mount next drive. We're not going to use key pass uh, at this point in time. And also the question might come to mind, well what if my USB drive is mounted as a different drive letter? Will it still find the TrueCrypt volume and the TrueCrypt location in the other files? The answer is yes. The script will automatically uh, search the current drive letter so no matter what the drive letter is set at and you're like well how come I can't see what these values are and change them uh, manually well the reason for that is because 
these things are going to be encrypted into the um, into the file. At times, people may not want others to know that they're using TrueCrypt and uh, what the name of their volume is. So in, by doing it this way, uh, it's not available for others to see, which could be a uh, for a security reasons and whatnot. Also, the TrueCrypt uh, .exe file can be renamed to something different, so it can't be found on your USB drive. If you want to go to those um, more extreme security measures, those options are available. So that's all we need for right now. We're going to go OK. And that creates a INI file, SSS INI. And just to look at it real quickly so that you can see also the values are encrypted inside the INI file for the, the different things. So don't bother editing it in here always use the settings for that so I'm going to close that so now that we have our volume on here and everything else from this point forward we should only need to go into our SSS and run SSS TC then it'll pop up ask us for our password we put OK in now it will mount to drive and up pops Explorer as we uh, told it to do up pops Firefox as we told it to do. So this is our portable version of Firefox. And so now if we wanted to set things in here and whatnot, it's all contained within our TrueCrypt volume. If we look at TrueCrypt, we'll see that our volume is mounted automatically to the first available drive letter, which is drive G in this case. Okay, once we close down Firefox, once we're done with it, and we come over to our systems tray we can see that our simple security script is running and we can come in and change our settings if we choose to we can tell it to launch the the secondary if it's not running right now we can tell it to explore so if we click on explore it'll pop up explorer to the root of the drive if we tell it to launch secondary it'll relaunch the secondary which in this case is firefox just a little bit of convenience there to make it a little easier so now if we close Firefox, we can close Firefox and we can, if we want to come in and change any settings, come into settings, uh, launch Explorer on startup, we don't need that one so we'll shut that off and click OK. And also once we exit now, you will notice that in our TrueCrypt here, if we bring it up, that we should see it disappear now that we've exited. So there you go. And the drive letter now is gone. And so this is how we can simply mount our drives and have some security at the same time. So if we did it one more time here, we'll mount the drive for us. Up pops Firefox. And here goes Firefox. Alright, so now if we close Firefox down again, we uh, exit our script and there we go it's on mounted again and so the volume's gone again so there you have it this is how we uh, use a simple security script to put a TrueCrypt volume together and make it easy to use and a lot more security with using these sorts of things